Hey guys, how's it going? The name's Luke Chris, and welcome back to Will You Press the Button? I'm pretty sure we all know at this point what this game is, but for anyone new who's now just for watching this for the first time, let's do a little recap. One, you get a choice of you can do this, you get this if you press the button, but something will happen to you, or something around you, or the people you love, or just something, you know, something bad will happen. It all just depends, really. You will escape an accident that would lead to your death, but two strangers will die. Right off the bat, we got a very big moral dilemma here, don't we, folks? On the one hand, I'd save myself from dying what could possibly be a horrific death, an accident that would lead to a horrific death. On the other hand, I could save two people I don't exactly know. So, do I value the lives of two strangers more than myself? Ah. Uh... You know, just, this has nothing to do with anybody, but I don't know, but I am not gonna look while I press. I am not gonna look. Not looking, not looking, not looking, not looking. Okay, see, it was totally unbiased. I was not looking. I couldn't know if I pressed one button or the other. But uh, as a consolation prize, it seems a majority of the people would rather, you know, not die and then have possibly two other people die. You can travel back to any time period you wish without consequences of change in the future, but you have to stay in that time period and you never get to see or interact with your loved ones again. This one's a hard no for me. I mean, I, I love the idea of being able to travel back to whenever I want, see whatever I want, but the fact of it is I love my family and my friends a bit too much to want to not be with them. And granted, I can go to any time period. I can go to the future and see all the cool high-tech gizmos that I uh, that they could possibly make. But I can't come back home and bring them back with me. Uh, on the other hand, I could go back into the far, far past and you know put ideas forth that would possibly make me a millionaire. I mean, I've got a lot of there are a lot of stuff that I know today that could be very helpful in the past, you know. But again, I love my folks and my friends too much to go. You are immortal. It can go any time in your life you want, even if you haven't lived it. But no one can see you, hear you, or notice you. You can't do anything. Now, when you say anything, does that mean I can't move? Like, I just have to stay in that one solitary spot, or I just can't interact with anything or anyone in the time period I choose to go into. Or if likewise, I can't no see, hear, or notice me, and I can't do anything. Does that also apply if I don't travel any time in my life that I want? Am I just suddenly a ghost? I mean, that's what it sounds like. No one can see you, no one can hear you, no one can notice you, and you can't interact with anything. That sounds like a ghost to me. So I'm guessing that means I died. Sometime, somehow, I'm not sure. Maybe then that, that accident that I somehow averted in the last couple questions. But that, I think that'd just be a bit too boring. I'm not gonna press it. Anyone you touch, including myself, can be cured of any sickness. Okay, that's something that could be very helpful today. But you can't play your favorite game, which watch your favorite movie, watch your favorite TV show, read your favorite book, and listen to your favorite song. Ah. Uh, okay, so favorite game, that would that would probably be the Kingdom Hearts series. Favorite TV show, probably The Flash. Favorite movie, De uh, Die Hard. I mean, that's a perfect movie all there, right there. I mean, really. Favorite book is no doubt The Hobbit. Favorite song, that's actually, I don't really have a favorite song, so I can't really say. Oh, come on, it's the chance to cure anyone of any sickness. Cancer, diabetes, anything, any kind of sickness. It doesn't say it has to be a virus or bacteria. It says any sickness, even possibly even sicknesses in the mind. The, the possibilities are limitless. So yes, I will press that button. Good to know that people value lives. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying people value lives. Hmm, here's a question about food, and I do love me some good food. You can choose any meal you can imagine at each sitting, but you can never have the same meal twice. Now, does that mean twice in a row, or does that mean twice in the, through my lifetime? Because that has a different connotation, because that means I can switch up my meal every single day. And there are dozens of food, like, different cuisines anyway, so I, there, I probably couldn't get through each one even in my lifetime. But then the idea of never being able to eat a single meal again, well then again, would a snack be considered a meal, exactly? Because I, 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 if you classify something as a snack, like say a peanut butter banana sandwich, you could technically eat that more than once. Through the day you have like one slice of pizza, that's a snack. You have one burger, that's a snack. You have one thing of whatever, that's a snack. 
But then you get to the meal portion of it, which a meal is considered, uh, like, pizza and da-da-da-da-da, or a burger and da-da-da-da-da. So, I could cheat this. I could cheat this, you know. You know what, just for the sake of it, because I could get to eat anything I can imagine, I will press the button. Ooh, looks like some people don't really want to eat what they can, but not eat the same meal twice. Hmm, well, I can understand that. I can understand that. Okay, you have the ability to banish all hatred from the world, be it from racism, religion, sexual discrimination, and gender discrimination. Oh, that'd be a perfect word right there, wouldn't it? But you have to sacrifice the one thing you truly love. Is it worth it? Now, by truly love, do you mean familial love? Or love that transcends family or friends? Or is it the love of an object or love of a passion? Or there's a lot of different loves you can think of, really, that could fit it. You could have a one true love of doing something like uh, my in my case a one true love of cooking or acting or something like that you could also have a one true love of well a one true love if you think about it unless it says explicitly it has to be the love of your life or your love of passion i'm taking this as abstract thinking because it leaves it open so i'm gonna say if i can sacrifice just one of the things that i truly love and in exchange for that we get the ability to banish all hatred from the world I think, that, honestly, that's a fair deal. Ooh, here's a toughie. You can transform into anything you can imagine. Real or fictional, I mean, you can transform into a dog or heaven be a dragon. But you go through excruciating pain every time you transform. I mean, you feel all the joints and tendons and muscles rip, shred, and pop and out of place, and you feel new attachments growing. So that, I imagine that hurts quite a lot. I honestly think that'd be worth the pain, actually, because that, that'd just be so cool when you think about it. You could become a dragon and... Oh, that be there's a lot of things. Oh, I can't really think of anything at this precise moment, but I'm sure there's a thing, quite a few things you can do when you're a dragon. But you know what? I think I'll leave this question up to you guys, see what you guys think. I personally, I personally would press the button, but I'm interested in hearing what you guys would do. Would you take the chance of becoming anything you could think of, but you have to go through pain every time? Is that trade-off worth it? Anyways, as usual, if you guys like the video, give a like, maybe a share, comment is always welcome and good, and a subscribe is just as welcome here. This is Luke Chris, and I'll catch you guys in the next game. See ya.